All right, welcome to Structure Pro. So here's another video here on column buckling. So we're asked in this question, what is the largest allowable length L? So I've circled L here in green. We can see we have this question from the Mechanics of Materials, 7th edition, great textbook. So here's what we're given here, and let's just talk it through. So we're given this column, A, B, C. And we can see that it's braced in some ways at C. We're given the small b and small d is 12 by 22 millimeters. The load is 3.8 kilonewtons, and we want a factor of safety of 3.2. And finally, we, we know E for steel given there. So this rod, it braces the column in a certain way. And we can see that it braces it in the xz plane. If you can imagine, this column could still buckle in, in the one plane, at C but not in the other so it's it's just braced in an XZ plane so let's look at the cross section from a vertical view here uh, and just following the axis that they've given us the Y goes along uh, this vertical way and the X in this horizontal way so bending about the Y axis we can see that that would normally be weaker we can see that intuitively because the height is lower there but the L effective is, is only L, whereas it's 2L for the x-axis, and this is because it's braced at C. So let's just draw these buckling shapes that would occur. So this is what would occur if it, there was no bracing. So that's not the case. So because of this bracing at C, it has to buckle essentially twice. In other words, its effective length is half of it, as it would have been without that rod. All right, good talk. So now let's start putting the pieces together to solve this. So the first thing we need, we need to factor in this factor of safety and see what the actual critical load is. So P critical would be equal to P times our factor of safety, okay? P is 3.8, but we know that we want to make sure that we're designing for an even larger load for safety. So the 3.2 times the 3.8 that will give us 12.16 or 12,160 newtons, converting to newtons. Okay, so now we have the load that we're going to be designing for. Now let's get our moments of inertia and start getting the pieces of our puzzle here. So just drawn the uh, labels on the distances for the axis down there. So first, let's do IY. So I in the y direction, we know that this equation is just bh cubed over 12, and that's shown there. So we get 3,168 millimeters to the power of 4, and very similar thing for Ix, and we know that's going to be quite a bit different because that's the strong axis, 10,648. Okay, so now's a good time to actually write down our equation so that we know which puzzle pieces we're trying to bring together to solve this. So the buckling formula. And that is P critical is equal to pi squared EI over L squared. And that's actually L effective. We know that will come into play here because in, in the uh, two different buckling directions, we have two different effective lengths for this question. And because we're actually asked to solve for the largest allowable length, let's get this equation in terms of length. So I've just rearranged it right there. Okay, now we're ready to actually solve for our, our allowable lengths according to buckling about the Y plane and then buckling about the X plane. So let's start with buckling about the Y plane. This is the weak axis, but we know that the effective length is only equal to L rather than 2L for the X plane. So L effective Y equals L and here's our equation. So now we can just plug stuff in. We have everything we need. Uh, square root of pi squared times 200,000 times 300 or sorry, times 3,168, all divided by the P critical, and we're using newtons, millimeters, and MPA. So these are consistent units, and they're going to give us an L in millimeters. So after grabbing our calculators and plugging everything in, we realize we have an allowable length of 717 millimeters, so less than a meter. And remember, that's really only half of this column ABC. So let's do this for the x-plane. Buckling about x, L-E-X is actually 2L, 
because the rod at C does not brace it from buckling. Square root of pi squared, 200,000, 10,648, all divided by 12,160. That gives 1,314. Wow, that's a weird way of saying it. 1314.7 millimeters. But we have to divide that by 2. And our final L is 657 millimeters. So we can see that that is less than the allowable length in the y direction for buckling about the y direction. So we conclude that buckling about the stronger axis actually governs due to the boundary conditions. So just a quick question here to reinforce our knowledge about column buckling. And thanks for watching. Great work.